Hey, this is Tejas and Donbass, second week of January. There's been a lot of talk about a big war coming, and it is coming. And it's not just going to be in Ukraine, but it's going to be Ukraine first. I'm seeing reports right now, reinforcements, preparations for provocations, by the Ukrops along the front, they're moving up more snipers, more equipment. They're mobilizing citizens, even women up to 60 years old. Um, it's a serious situation. They've got over half their army on the Donbass front. So things are getting serious. Where I sit right now, my home is less than five miles from, not just from the front line, but from Ukrainian, major Ukrainian army bases. So, in Petrovsky District, we're surrounded on three sides, and uh, when, when it kicks off, it's going to get real hot right here. So, the perspective that I have is not just from somebody that's on the ground and close to the action, but also somebody that's got skin in the game. So, when I talk about this, I might not always be right, but I've certainly done my homework, and I certainly have great motivation to know what I'm talking about and this is what I'm talking about the Russians continue to reinforce uh, their troops along the Ukrainian border they're bringing troops all the way from Siberia Kamchatka on the way to the west right now they have scheduled with Belarus in February and March major military exercises combined exercises with the Belarusian army and the Russian army. Those exercises may very well take place in Ukraine. Russia can no longer trust anything that the EU, NATO, or the USA says. You know, they've been lied to for decades now and it's an existential threat for NATO to continue to expand. What's already happening in Ukraine is a real grave danger to the future and security of Russia and the Russians have finally made clear made clear to any intelligent person that they're not going to stand for it anymore they're not going to put up with it and if they can't reason with the people that are their true enemies which NATO and the US are genuine enemies of the Russian people and the Russian state then they're just going to go ahead and handle them like they handled the German Nazis back in the 1940s. And it shouldn't be a surprise to anyone, and it shouldn't be uh, blamed on Russia when they do. They, they have, you know, been patient. They have taken more than enough bullshit from the, the West and Ukraine and NATO, every provocation, and now they're, they're finally fed up. You know, some people in the Western governments and in the, the Western media, including the alt media, are saying, oh no, uh, Russia will just keep going diplomatically. You know, they can't risk a big war. I really think those people are wrong, and we're going to soon find out. My prediction is before March, before March, there's going to be some heavy duty action, certainly right here in Ukraine and then wherever else it takes it. Russia is going to clean out the Nazis out of Ukraine. And that, not just talking about Ukrainian Nazis either. So I'm betting on that before March. We'll soon see. That's six weeks. And then that's not even the big war. The big war is going to happen after that if the U.S., EU continue to provoke Russia, continue to attack it economically. Russia is going to strike back economically and technically and if need be, militarily. When Russia comes into Ukraine, they're going to make an announcement that they're coming in to liberate. They're not going to shoot anybody that doesn't shoot at them first, but anybody that shoots at them is going to be completely destroyed. And that doesn't just mean Ukrainians. That means any NATO ships in the Black Sea that fires missiles, you know, any NATO uh, mercenaries, any NATO instructors, doesn't matter. You shoot at the Russians, they're going to shoot back and they aren't going to stop until they're done. So, if, so it's not going to be an easy fight, but Russia will take Ukraine. 
and it'll take it quickly and it'll take it absolutely as much as they want to at least as much as up to Kiev then <clears throat> the diplomatic and economic war is going to start the US has said that they're going to put devastating sanctions against Russia and uh, those sanctions will be responded to by Russia Russia already has Europe by the balls Europe gets almost half more than 40 percent of its uh, gas energy comes from Russia if they cut that off they cut off Europe's balls economic balls industrial balls because they can't continue to produce the factories won't work it's just like in Ukraine right now I mean they're heating the Kiev airport with firewood they're heating high-rise apartments with firewood right now literally and that's a fact it'll be the same in Europe you know the cost of energy is going up the cost of food is going up and uh, it's going to be economic devastation for Europe the US economy is completely tied to the European economy and if Europe goes down the US is going down too and it will and especially if Russia works in conjunction with China for economic warfare against the West, it's a done deal completely. So if the U.S. continues to provoke an attack economically, Russia will hit back. And understand that economic war is a real war. Economic violence is just physical violence in slow motion, but it can be every bit as destructive and even more painful. You remember the 500,000 Iraqi children that were killed by sanctions. It was actually 560,000 children. And when asked about it, Madeleine Albright said, well, we think it was worth it. So that's the kind of monsters that are ruling the West and the Russians have had enough of that. And if they have to punish those people then they will and they'll say that they think it's worth it so understand that if it comes down to an economic or military war between Russia and the West it was not the Russians that started any of it and those people in the West the citizens of the US and Europe have only their rulers and themselves to blame because you the people of especially America have seen the crimes of your rulers over the last 30 years at least you know just go right down the line Yugoslavia Afghanistan Iraq Iran Lebanon Libya Ukraine and that's only a partial list of course but all the crimes that your rulers have done in other places while you sat by and were complicit in your submission, in your collaboration with those crimes, now your rulers are going to do to you. If there's not enough gas, if there's not enough food, it's going to get really, really bad for the regular people. The rulers, the oligarchs, the 1%, they're going to have their food, they're going to have gas to keep them warm and, and fill their cars. But regular people can literally starve and they won't even care. So understand that this is the people that are really to blame. And it's going to get tough. 2022 is going to be the year of the birth of a whole new world. And, you know, giving birth is always difficult. It's bloody. And it's hard. But, of course, it's necessary. So understand, here's what I'm saying. Russia is getting ready to take Ukraine, liberate Ukraine, denazify Ukraine, and it'll do it by whatever means necessary. It'll use as much force as it needs. It can no longer tolerate the risk of Nazis on their doorstep. So, at once that happens, US and NATO can react either by accepting the fact that Russia has to take care of its own security, protect its own interests, or by exacerbating the situation even further, in which case, as Vladimir Putin has said, those that force Russia into war will learn the true meaning of pain. So, 
that's the situation here. We'll see if my predictions pan out in the next month or two or not. But uh, there's a lot of reason to think that that's the way it's going to be, at least from here in Donetsk. That's how it looks. So here's wishing good luck to all good people all around the world. May God protect the innocent and may the rest of us get everything we deserve. Da vibe.